self-care has never really been a priority of mine and it was kind of something I struggled with for a long time. I've talked about in previous videos how I was very much a people pleaser and always trying to cater to other people's needs over my own. And self-care is such a broad term. Self-care looks and feels different for everybody. Over the past couple of years, I've really started to prioritize that part of my life, especially as someone like me who is very introverted, spends a decent amount of time alone, is very overwhelmed in social situations, and needs to recharge in a different way. So in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about what my self-care routine is looking like nowadays as an introvert who needs time to recharge her social battery. Now before we get into the video, I just want to quickly introduce myself. My name is Bridget. On this channel, I talk a lot about introverted things. I talk about social anxiety, I talk about general anxiety, I talk about a whole bunch of other mental health related things. So if any of that interests you, make sure you go check out some of my other videos as well. So with that being said, let's get into the video. I watch so many videos that are so aesthetically pleasing and I'm always like, could I do something like that? So we're gonna try it out and see how it goes. It might be terrible, it might be great, who knows? So I guess I'll just walk you through my day and talk about each step as I go along. The first thing in my day that I typically do that I would categorize as self-care would be like my morning routine. I wake up, immediately go to the bathroom, brush my teeth, and as I'm brushing my teeth, I'm making the bed. I always try to multitask whenever I can, especially doing something mundane, like I'd rather be doing two things at once, you know what I mean? So I'm doing that and then I'm doing my skincare. And my skincare has something that's drastically changed in the past couple of months, even the past year, I'd say. That is something I'm heavily prioritizing. I went through this really bad period of dealing with hormonal acne and probably stress-related acne, and it was so bad. So I was breaking it all over my back, and it was just really upsetting to look at, honestly, because I never really struggled that bad with acne my entire life. So it was a really rough period, and if anyone who has ever struggled with hormonal acne is watching this, just know that you're not alone. There's so many people out there struggling with it that you probably don't even realize. So I really have been prioritizing my skincare routine and just like pampering myself a little bit more in the morning and making myself feel awake and refreshed and just ready to start my day. And then after that, I'll make my coffee and then I'll go to my office and I'll sit down and read for about 45 minutes to an hour. That's typically what I do. The books that I'm reading are kind of all over the place. I'm the type of person that will probably be reading like three or four books at once, unless it's a fiction book. So I'll read like a couple of self-help books on the sides just because I feel like it's not something you need to be totally invested in because it's not a story you can, you know, go out of order. It doesn't really matter. But if it's a fiction book or like even nonfiction, I'm probably going to stick with that book and keep reading that particular type of book. I wouldn't read more than one of those at a time because then the stories just get very confusing, the characters get confusing. Another type of book that I typically like to read, it's like memoirs that are teaching a lesson but also telling a story. That's one of my favorite types of books. After that, I'm typically doing some kind of work-related thing for about another hour and then I take a break and I head to the gym. And my gym routine has been pretty consistent for a while now. I get in like these lulls where I really, really feel the need to change it up, but I've been pretty much consistently going to the gym at least three times a week for like years. Or maybe not going to the gym, but doing a home workout. But I'll get my sweat on and I sweat a lot. As you'll see in this clip, I'm dripping, I'm drenched. I'm taking a rag to my face. Oh God, it's really bad. I don't know if anyone else has a sweating problem, but I think, I think I might. Whatever. And after that, I'm going home, I'm showering, getting ready for the day. And I'll show you my little makeup routine in this clip. I'm really pretending to be a beauty guru. It's kind of fun, actually. Like, I'm not showing any of the products or anything, but if you guys would be interested in that, I could totally do another video. I would be happy to. And then after that, I'm doing some work. And this is when you'll probably see me showing you the podcast that I'm listening to. That is another thing that I really prioritize for my self-care because I love getting out of my head. As someone who is constantly in their head, I really just like having that feeling of like stepping back and just absorbing, not doing anything, just absorbing the information. And it's usually like I'll put on a podcast when I'm doing something else. Whether I'm doing something on the computer, like you'll see in this clip, or if I'm going for a walk. I didn't today. 
I haven't been in a while. I should probably do that. But I love going outside. I love going for walks. Nature is healing. <laughs> like, I know that sounds really stupid. I actually was reading a book about this, but there's so many studies that show that having access to nature or even just looking at a clip of nature or an artwork of nature can do so much for your mental health. So I really try to prioritize that as well. Getting outside at least once a day, even if it's just the walk to my car. I just like being outside. And the area that we live in is super nice for that. Like right now I'm looking directly in front of the sliding glass door in my bedroom and all I can see is nature. So if you have access to that, I know in northern places it's super cold right now so it's it feels like such a drag to get yourself outside or you know sometimes it's not even possible to get yourself outside but like I was reading in this book, just watching a clip of nature can have almost the same exact effect. Another thing that I would count as my self-care routine is the time I have while I'm making dinner. I used to hate cooking because I thought I was really bad at it and I think I was just doing the wrong things. So over the past probably two years, I'd say, like I've gotten into cooking a lot more and being a little more creative with my cooking because if you're not getting creative, you're going to be making the same things over and over again. They're probably not going to taste good and you're just going to get bored of it. So I started to get creative. This time that I have while I'm cooking is so therapeutic to me. Again, I might throw on a podcast. I might throw on a TV show that I'm watching. Always trying to do two things at once, but sometimes I won't have anything on and that's just as good, honestly. I, I get so into it. The process of like, cutting all your ingredients up and then throwing it together and then being able to, I don't know, come up with something new and different and fun and another recipe I can add to my repertoire. And one thing about me is if I'm going to look up a new recipe, I'll look up the ingredients on the recipe. There's no way I'm going to be following that recipe. You will never catch me sitting there with a printed out recipe or even a recipe book because I'm never going to follow it. If it says two teaspoons of this, one tablespoon of that, I'm gonna eyeball it. Like, I know how much salt to put in something, how much of something that might be a little bit too much. So nothing ever tastes the same, but it's always pretty good, which is all that matters. And then my favorite part after dinner is the cleanup process because I love a clean home. I thrive off of a clean home. While I'm waiting for something to cook in the oven or on the stove or whatever the case is, I'm lighting up all the candles, I'm closing all my curtains, I'm turning on the lights. It's such a vibe. That time before dinner where you're just relaxing and you're like so at peace, ugh, it's great. And then usually after that, it's different every single night. But most nights, at least during the week, my husband and I will probably be watching one of our shows or sitting down to read a book or playing a game or maybe we might have plans with a friend or something after dinner. So it's always a little different, but usually it's us sitting on the couch like little couch potatoes and talking to each other or not talking to each other. Depends upon the kind of day we both had. And I think we're pretty good at this point about knowing when each other it just doesn't want to talk or if we really need to talk. Another thing, since we moved to this new house, I've been able to take baths. I am such a bath person. In our old apartment, our bathtub was like, like the smallest thing I've ever seen. I rarely took baths in there. So when we saw this house and I took a look at the bathtub, so baths are always relaxing. Again, I'll probably be either reading a book in the bath, watching a show, or listening or watching to a podcast. And those are my favorite times. And I think, so far with all these things, I hope you're noticing a pattern at this point. As an introvert, I know what I need to recharge my social battery. And as someone who also struggles with social anxiety, it's really important to me that I get into that, that flow of being able to absorb information and listen and recognize and get creative. When I have all of that information, it's so much easier to go to the next social event the next gathering, the next time I hang out with people in general. All of that stuff, that's things to talk about. 
when the conversations go dull or when you feel like you don't have anything to talk about or when you want to have a deep conversation with somebody. I like reading, I like listening, I like watching because I, you know, I just enjoy it in general, but it also provides me that way of being able to give a little bit more of myself and find what works for me, find what I like to talk about, find what I'm passionate about, what interests me. So those are the things that I do on a daily basis as far as my self-care goes. Now, that's going to change depending upon the situation, but this is what a, a typical day would look like for me. So let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. So that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys found it useful and I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you next time.